Blog Talk Radio. Fantasy sports and politics. Get ready to rumble. You wanna talk back? You in the right place. So take a step back before I get all up in your face. I know you got to live, you know what got mine. But there's like 50 other dudes holding on the phone line. Your voice will be her turn. Next caller, please. And, and if I don't concur, we can agree to disagree. We talking fantasy sports and politics. Fantasy Sports and Politics. I do this for you because there's nothing else but me who will do this for you. Now, there's a lot on tap today. We are live and in living color, and uh, we got a bunch of sound bites. I'm looking for a bunch of reaction from you guys. But uh, I want you to understand, we are talking about MMA a lot today. Mixed martial arts on tap today. The NBA Finals today. Uh, who do you think is better, Jordan or LeBron? We know what Scottie Pippen thinks. We want to hear what Stephen A. has to say, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Also, we're going to give you a little preview, a little preview of the master plan. We're also going to talk a little bit about football, and uh, oh yes, it's college football season. It's time to get ready and get down and dirty. With me today is my co-host, the one and only, Jerry, the master, Taylor. What's up, Jerry? What's up, what's up? We got a lot of going on, man. Let's let it get rolling. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. If you have not heard by now, ladies and well, let's see. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. There's so much in store today. I'm just taking it off like this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you had to pick a player in their prime to be your cornerstone player, would it be LeBron or Michael? Now, according to Scottie Pippen, if you haven't heard, I don't know where you've been in the sports world, but Scottie Pippen recently stated that, uh, you know, if he, you know, were, were to, to judge the play of the two, he would definitely say that LeBron James is the overall better player. He got some heat for it. He tweeted back to, to the world, uh, remember, I've played the game that you guys love and cheer. So to me, what that says is, you all can think what you want, but I've actually played with the man. I play on the professional level, and uh, I I think I know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna ask you, Jerry, what do you think? <laughs> when I heard when I heard about this, I I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I I he played with Michael Jordan. Um, and had good times and bad times with Michael and without Michael. And every time, well, not every time, but uh, a lot, of, he won six championships with Michael Jordan. How in the world, in all God's creation, you can say that LeBron James, with no championships um, and only one uh, trip to the final up until this time, is better than Michael Jordan? When... He had the team all on his own. He opted out on one of the games at a crucial moment. And the only time he did win championships is when Michael was teamed up with him. That, I mean, that, you, you tell me. I, can't, I, I don't understand. I, if he's got a, a cross the bear or he's got a, something um, against Michael Jordan, that he would come out and make an outrageous statement like that. I don't care if he played uh, 50 years in the NBA and, and uh, 58 of them with Michael Jordan, uh, 48 of them with Michael Jordan. Um, there's no way that Michael Jordan takes a back seat to LeBron James. Okay. I mean, that's, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. So 
some of, of, of Scotty's points were um, LeBron makes his teammates better and that LeBron gets everyone involved and LeBron plays both sides of, of the court. Now, Michael's defense, he was nine-time All-Defensive Player of the Year uh, or team, Defensive Team of the Year. Uh, he, you could argue that he made his teammates better in practice by demanding a great deal more from them. And when it came to game time, he took over the game. But uh, he wasn't a big passer. He wasn't. I mean, nobody can deny that. I, uh, I, 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 I beg to differ, and you know why I beg to differ? I'm going to give you at least two instances um, I beg to differ that on. Um, first of all, Michael Jordan, like you said, uh, um, demanded a lot in practice. And we're talking about practice. 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 Now. Okay. Practice. I'm emphasizing that for the simple fact is he made his teammates better in practice, which in turn makes them better in, in um, uh, real life games. Um, I'm going to throw out three three names to you, and, and uh, two of them um, were significant: John Paxton, B.J. Armstrong, Steve Kerr. How many of those guys hit game winning shots that were passed from Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan? I'm about to say none for Michael Jackson. <laughs> from Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan passed the ball to them to make significant shots to win games. So when he you say that he doesn't make he doesn't make other teams, uh, teammates better, I really beg to differ on that. He, no, he I didn't made, say he didn't. I didn't say he didn't make them better. I'm just saying that he wasn't known as a passer. I, I just gave you uh, at least two instances, and, and it's probably more. But those two instances help win NBA final games. Um, I, I, I'm not doubting it. What I'm saying is he's not known as a passer. I'm not saying he, had, he didn't do it, but his passing or assist abilities are not something that stand out when you think of Michael Jordan. When you think of LeBron, now, again, I'm playing devil's advocate here. When you think of LeBron James, you think of, okay, a defensive person, um, that doesn't want to take the last shot, so he, he pretty much passes it off. He has a uh, he has been known as an assist person with his short career, but I'm not saying the guy is is better than Jordan. I'm, I remember, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't like Michael Jordan personally. Okay. Okay. I don't. I've never well, liked him throughout his entire career. And I see Black is in is in the uh, chat room, by the way. Black will be back next week starting on Thursday's show. He wanted me to play a sound bite of uh, Stephen A's reaction to, uh, to the whole controversy. But I don't have that because uh, he sent me a video and I don't have the audio format of that. But let me, let me play you something here. Horace Grant. Horace Grant had this to say about Michael Jordan and his abilities. Michael Jeffrey Jordan is the best basketball player who ever played the game. I mean, when you win numerous MVPs, you've taken the team to, to six championships and probably could have been eight if he didn't retire those two years. You know, MVPs and the playoffs and the uh, championship. I mean, he made us better players. He gave us that confidence. Yeah, he gave him that confident, not confidence, confident. But anyway, I mean, Horace just repeated exactly what you said. Matter of fact, I sounded alike. I thought you were playing me in my sound bite. But uh, that's the, that's what Horace said about Michael Jordan. Now, everybody's jumping on this bandwagon against Scottie Pippen. But let's think about it here. LeBron was in the same boat as Michael was before Scottie Pippen. I mean, that's a well-known fact. And not saying Dwayne Wade is the Scottie Pippen nowadays or whatever, because Dwayne can score. Dwayne does play solid defense, but Scottie was known more of a, as a defensive player. Um, Chris Bosh, you can look at him as, as uh, 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 Wayne, not Wayne Wright, um, uh, Luke Longley, uh, uh, 
type player or whoever that it's inter- interchangeable. But there's a lot of folks that, that really think that uh, Pippen is on the right track. There's some folks, such as yourself, who feel that he's wrong. Well, can I, I, can I, throw, this, can I throw this out there? Go ahead. There, there are only a, a, a handful, or less than a handful of, of go-to players. When you absolutely need a, a, a basket, when you actually need a crunch time, when a game counts, you need a, a score whether it's a two-pointer or a three-pointer. Most of the time, it's a two-pointer. There's only a handful of those guys. Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, Dirk L- 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 Nowinski. That's, that's the four. I said less than a handful. That's four guys that if you need a go-to player, you go to one of those four players, and they'll get you the points. And no, notice, notice. I didn't put LeBron James in that category because he's not that type of player. Michael Jordan was that type of player, go-to player, guaranteed. Uh, other than, excuse me, other than Michael, on the top of that list, right behind Michael is Kobe Bryant, and those other guys, and whatever order you want to put him in, fall behind that. So, and LeBron's not in that category. That's why I'm saying Michael Jordan, greatest player, greatest go-to player. Uh, hands up ten times better than LeBron James, in my opinion. Not even LeBron James, not even close. Not even in a, in the same category. I can't believe Scottie Pippen, teammate of Michael Jordan for all the years that they won those championships, um, would come out and say that LeBron is a better player than uh, Michael Jordan. There's got to be some unli- underlying reason for him saying that, not just because I played the game. And I played with Michael Jordan. I think LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. Uh, that I mean, that, that's either that or, or Scottie Pippen is starting to lose his, his faculties. Oh, my God. Are you saying on this show that Scottie Pippen has lost his mind? Yes. I'll say it. Hold on. It hold on. Hold on. We had to play the Minnesota Viking horn on that. Announcement. Jerry the Master says Scottie Pippen has lost his faculties. <laughs> All right, keep going. Oh, no, I think I lost Jerry on that one. Uh, oh, man, that kind of is bad because I had something lined up for Jerry. Uh, we're going to call him right back. Jordan was dynamite. That's what my boy Black, Black Wright says. He's sick. He's sick. But he's still on board. He's still on board with the show. That's what I'm talking about. Probably don't get his voice back for a week or so. But anyway, uh, I got my boy Jerry back on the line. Jerry, you there? I'm here. I don't all know right, all right. Here. Dude, I think God hung up on you for talking about LeBron like that. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do it. I honestly didn't do it. I just hit the horn. But since it's we're talking okay. about the heat, huh? It's all right. All right, since we're talking about the Heat, right, let's talk about this this championship game that uh, we got coming up. Uh, Mavericks and and the Heat, it's going to be an awesome, awesome match. Come talk uh, to me a little bit about that, uh, Jerry, before I get to the sound bites. Well, uh, as, as, I, as I was talking on the Thursday show, I was tooting my own when uh, it looked like uh, uh, um, the OKC, I mean, almost City Thunder and, and, and the uh, young um, Chicago Bulls were going to meet each other in the finals. And that's, that's the two I picked to be in the finals. Um, obviously, uh, the math is, is wrong, uh, um, and the two, their two opponents with the uh, experience and, and know-how and uh, closing games out, uh, Collectively, not singularly, one single player, but collectively, uh, are playing. Um, this is this game to me uh, is probably one of the better matchups um, we've seen in a while. Uh, these are two very good teams. Um, um, I think the Heat are better on the dif- defensive end, but both both of these teams are definitely have a lot of offensive score scoring power. Uh, we're going to have to see who's going to uh, impose their will against the other. Um, I really can't go. I really don't know. Um, 
I'm not a Heat fan. I definitely don't like LeBron James um, um, for the simple reason I think he punked out uh, from Cleveland and, and went to the Heat because he, think, he thought he couldn't do it by himself. So he had to have uh, uh, help from his friends, which is, which to me is, uh, uh, I lost a little respect for him for that, doing that. Um, I have to give it to uh, uh, Dallas. I think uh, Dallas has is, is got a chance to uh, um, uh, right the wrong. I shouldn't say right the wrong, but payback from the last time they met in 2006. So uh, I'll go with Dallas. What the heck? I'll play Dallas. Now, see. Uh, I picked Dallas once I saw how they were playing in the playoffs, and I'm going to stick to it. Mike Knox, I went on his show Friday morning and because uh, I didn't have to work, and uh, he was trying to make a little deal with me. He tried to bet me to uh, go ahead and, and, and if the Heat win in, in six, he wants to come over and take over my show. Uh-uh, not going to do it. <laughs> but I told him I bet him $100 for an iPad because he wants an iPad, and I want an iPad. And Mike Knox, I see he stepped out of the, out of the room. Uh, let me tell Black. Black, no, it was not. You sent me a link to uh, the ESPN page. That's why I don't have it. There was no file attached, so I can't play it. But I look forward again, my friend. I look forward again. Anyway, uh, let me get to some of these sound bites here. I've got a bevy of them, and we're going to start with Avery Johnson, uh, the former coach of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I believe he was the coach that took them to their first finals in 2002, or was it 2005? Uh, yeah, I believe it was 2005 when uh, – the Mavericks lost to the Heat. This all comes down to defense. The same thing for Dallas. Dallas is a team that uh, plays a combination defense. You know, they play some man-to-man, -man, but also they play some zone. You know, they'll stay in their zone a little bit, and they'll match up out of their zone and uh, try to, you know, make you beat them over the top. So it's just going to be the team that defends and rebounds and also, you know, who can close out games. Speaking of closing out, they couldn't close out their game or their series versus the old uh, Miami team, who I think had a better squad than this current Miami Heat team. That's just me, Shaq, Alonzo Mourning, uh, 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 what's this guy named? Ham Hamlet, I can't think of his name right now. The guy that came Don off the bench. Hamlet. Yeah, Don yeah, Don him. Don yeah, they had Gary Payton. Um and Wade, and, you know, that was a better put-together team than this current team, in my opinion. So, uh, and and the Mavs let a 2-0 lead slip away, and uh, Miami came back and won, you know, in in six games. I don't think that's going to happen this year, but, but we'll see. Let me talk to Cedric Sabalas. Hey, Cedric Sabalas. What's going on? What do you see happening in the finals? I'm going to go with the Miami Heat right now. They're just playing really well. Uh, I think they have two of the best closers in the game. They also have a consistent player in Bosch. The All-Stars are just going to prevail in here. It's going to be real difficult, but I see two big games, two really big games out of Dallas from Jason Kidd and J.J. Barrera at that point position, but I think that's the only two that they'll get, and uh, Miami Heat will win it in six. Unfortunately, Sabalas with a deep voice, you're wrong, but uh, I do believe that um, that Barat, Barea and 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 Kidd are going to be key. But another key component, who was in the series last time, who you know asked himself, why did he miss a three pointer? Two three pointers that could actually won the game, uh, and the uh, game five and then game six is Jason Terry. Jason Terry missed the final uh, bucket in game five, the one in the game, and then got a foul with like four seconds left in game six and had the lead, but Miami hit the free throws and won the game, and he also missed the final three-pointer to uh, close that out. 
So it's a lot going on there. But uh, Rick Carlisle, the coach of the Mavericks, former coach of the Indiana Pacers, also agrees with Avery Johnson about the defense. Here's what he had to say. Our big guys are going to be involved a lot in the perimeter. We're going to have to scramble out of those situations and rebound. And, again, it's efficiency with the ball. Defense and rebounding are going to decide the series. Defense and rebounding. I told you. Defense and rebounding, Jerry. I mean, I'm looking at some big boys here. I'm looking at Tyson Chandler. I'm looking at Sean Marion. I'm looking at uh, uh, Brendan Hayward. I'm looking at Big Dirk. And on the other side, I don't see too many big guys, man. What do you see before I get to the next couple sound bites? Like, like I said, I mean, it, 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 these, two, these two teams are evenly matched, in my opinion. They're very evenly matched. Um, uh, where the, the, uh, um, the Heat are uh, heavy in the, I wouldn't say heavy, but they have a, a decent, and I'm not a Chris Bosch fan, even though he, he showed out this, this series against Carlos Boozer and um, Noah. Uh, um, uh, I think the two main guns are LeBron James at, at the uh, uh, two, two of the forward, small forward, and that uh, Dwayne Wade is a two guard. Um, and on the other side, it's, it's uh, Dirk Levinsky at the uh, at the power forward, and then that uh, um, I can't remember his name now. I can't believe I can't remember his name. He's been where, with him for so I can't remember where his name. He's, where is he at? What position? He's the, uh, uh, I think he's the um, uh, small forward, if I'm not mistaken. Jason Terry. <clears throat> Jason Terry. Um, well, Terry comes off the bench as a six-man, and, yeah, he can play shooting and small forward, but yeah, typically – But, I, but I, think, I think he he, uh, he plays a lot of minutes. Um, and I consider him a starter, even though he does come off the bench. Um, he he plays a lot of minutes, starter minutes, even though he comes off the bench. And I consider him a starter. I don't. Uh, um, Tyson Chandler is their is their enforcer down down low uh, low, um, and he's got some nasty in him. He may be able to offset uh, Udonis Haslam, or um, and I forget the uh, forward. I mean the uh, uh, center they have. Peja, Peja Stolakovich, that's who Black said is, is Peja, and he's right. Um, but you mentioned uh, Tyson Chandler being that enforcer, and you're right. And here's what he has to say about stopping the Heat and their dunks. Oh, no, no, no. In the finals, yeah, I can care less. Uh, you know, you, you make things tough. Uh, you know, if I got an opportunity to go after a shot, I'm going after it every time. The, yeah, I, I'm going to play that one more time. You hear how he answered the question? Here you go. Mm -hmm. In the finals, yeah, I can care less. Uh, you know, you, you make things tough. Uh, you know, if I got an opportunity to go after a shot, I'm going after it every time. So he's, he, he's going uh, balls to the wall, so to speak, and he's going after every ball, everything. And, you know, a Peja, Peja can get hot. Don't forget, they got the Matrix. They've got the Matrix down there to block uh, shots as well, play defense, and can get hot at some point. Dallas, I'm telling you, Dallas has a more complete and balanced team than Miami. I mean, hey, it is what it is, but a lot of people like the Heatles. I like the Heatles as well. I recently picked them to win the entire thing. But after reviewing, you know, uh, the way things are with Dallas and seeing how they handled the West. Now, again, the West was kind of easy this year because most of the hot players went to the East. But they dismantled the reigning NBA champions, the Lakers. That wasn't an easy task where they had two big boys. And they, they took them apart and yeah, beat them. Yeah, those two, but those two big boys played like they were uh, 
uh, five inches short, man, and with no heart. And I'll say that. I said it again. They play with no heart. Lamar Odom is uh, up, up and down, and sometimes he plays with heart, sometimes he doesn't. Um, Andrew Bynum is, um, in my opinion, um, a front runner. Anytime he, he, he got adversity, he has negative uh, um, negative Reaction. things that happen on, on the court. Absolutely. Um, so he's the front runner. He plays well when he when he's when he's on top, but when he's on when he's got adverse conditions on the court, uh, you see the real Andrew Bynum come out. And um, okay. Paul Gasol, uh, he was he wasn't he wasn't in the series from the beginning, um, and they made and they took full advantage of that. Anybody can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. Two things. First of all. Uh, we have a caller on the line, but I think they just want to listen. If you want to call, folks, 347-637-3220. Again, that number is 347-637-3220. And when you do it, go ahead and hit that button, that one button, so it can cue me up to let me know that you want to talk. Otherwise, I'm going to just let you listen. Um, but here's the deal. The second person that you said was clutch for the last shot was Kobe Bryant. He plays on the Los Angeles Lakers, who were defeated by the Dallas Mavericks. L.A. has a very good team. L.A. has a very similar team to the Miami Heat. Very similar. And yet, they found a way to win. So I'm not saying that L.A. And, and, and the Heat are are prototypical championship teams. But what I'm saying is Miami has already faced a team. I mean, uh, Dallas has already faced a team very similar to the Miami Heat, if not better, and they won. But... Uh, with that said, let me play this sound bite about Rick Carlisle. I think it's just, it's not the same one, but it's about the matchup. It's a great matchup. You know, they, uh, they're they playing their best basketball right now. We feel like we're playing well. And so, uh, you know, we're going to have to play our game, play at a high level. We're going up against, you know, a team that has three big-time all-stars. And they have a, you know, they have a system that, uh, that's been very successful for them. And that's the thing right there. Three big time all stars. That's it. That's it. You know, uh, Mike Bibby hasn't been cited in the playoffs for the Heat. In my opinion, he hasn't. Um, for my money, you know, it's like, why the Bulls leave Boozer and Noah on the bench? That's what, like $68 million they left on the bench in the fourth quarter. Versus the Heat, even though they were winning, you still got to close out the game. Uh, talk to me, Jerry. Tell, tell me why, man for man, or or in this series, you think the Heat are going to win? I still don't see I, it. No, I, I never said the Heat uh, were going to win. My, my, I said my choice was the Dallas Mavericks. I said I, said, I, said, I don't like the Heat. I don't like the Heat. Uh, I, I, I'm not a big LeBron James fan, for sure. Uh, and I think the uh, Dallas Mavericks are, are going to uh, the revenge factor uh, on the Miami Heat. That was much even earlier. Uh, I definitely like the Dallas Mavericks um, playing against uh, um, the Miami Heat. I, 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 it's, it's a tough matchup, and uh, it's not, no clear-cut winner, like I said earlier. But if I had my preference and if I was locked down to one team versus the other, it would have to be the Dallas Mavericks. Um, and I don't know if that's the possible. Okay. Well, I was trying to win, uh, give you an opportunity to win your $400 back, but I guess you're not. So it's okay. You'll still owe me. And I lost Jerry again. Wow, I think Jerry's having a bad connection. But uh -huh. I'm bringing this car for a 2 4 -0. Call from two four. Welcome to Fantasy Sports and Politics. Please state your name and your claim to fame. What's up? What's going on? What's up, cuz? Oh, this is my cousin. This is my real life blood cousin, 
Mikhail, the poet, if you didn't know it, snap, 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 snap. There you go. Don't even stop. All right, cousin. Talk but, to me and the listeners about this this matchup. Uh, let me let me let me let me let me state this. Uh, I I do not like the Heat. I can't stand them. You know, but now now hold on. Is it because of LeBron and Wade and Bosh, or is it just the fact you don't like the Heat? I, I just don't like LeBron. I'm just not a LeBron fan. I mean, okay. I I think the brother got a. You know, got a uh, you know a great deal of talent, but I'm not on I'm not on that train just yet. You know, I I I I, I had great respect for Wade, and I got respect for uh, Chris Boss. <clears throat> it's just that I'm not I'm not with the Heat right now. But from a strictly strictly from a basketball perspective, though, um, I think the Heat are going to take it. I think that uh, Dallas caught uh, caught the Lakers. At, at 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 a very good time. I mean, you got to look at it. The Lakers have been top tier, top one or two for the past four years. For the past four years, and they've been, you know, and I think that you know all of that, all of all of the meltdown and the and and, and uh, the missing in action, all that stuff. That's accumulation of all the years that they've been that they, that they've been running. You know, so I think that. Um, Dallas, I, I don't think they got – I really don't see this going past six, really. I think the Heat is going to wow. take them out. I think the Heat is going to take them out. And as much as I hate it, you know what I mean, I can't stand it, but you can bank on – you can put you can put money on Dirk Nowitzki choking. You can put money what? on that. Yeah, I, I on that said it. You put I'm money you on him it. choking. You got, okay. hey, I got money on Dirk Nowitzki choking. Sorry. We, 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 you and I are going to put some money on that, but since you brought up the big German, here's what Dirk had to say about the Heat. Well, they're, they're tough to, to keep in front of them. I mean, that's, it's not only us. That's, that's for the whole league. I mean, they're, they're so good at putting their heads down and uh, getting to the basket, getting fouled. Uh, and uh, we had some of it actually last year. I think Westbrook was – just kind of doing some of that stuff uh, in Durant. So, uh, yeah, we got to do it. That's, that's a big part of the series is, is trying to keep those guys out of the lane. So, basically you said, you know, he's going to choke, but he's saying because of the experience they just had with Oklahoma City, you know, with, with Westbrook driving to the basket, mm-hmm. with, with Grant, I mean not Grant, with, uh, with uh, 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 Durant, you know, mm-hmm. to – Oh, geez, he just says, uh-uh. That, you I'm know, they're prepared for I'm it. Listening. I'm listening. Like what I'm saying, because of that experience along with the Laker experience, they're pretty much prepared for the type of game plan that uh, that Miami's going to bring. Mm-hmm. And you say no? No. No. I mean, just like, just like, you, just like you know, he's citing that, that experience from them being, you know, dealing with uh, – you know Oklahoma City and, and and things of that nature. I'm going on, going on the past history of dirt. You know he's choked. I mean let's keep it real. He's all he's choked. You know he he's got he's got excellent game. He cannot. I I don't see him. No one really being able to defend him one on one. You know let, let's not. I, I'm not disrespecting this game, but I think when it when it really comes down to it. When they really, when they really, really need it, he's gonna choke. He's wow. going to choke. Jay, what do you think about that? I think there's a different. This is a different Mavericks team than what everyone was thinking that they were going to show in this playoffs. Um, this is this is a Maverick team that's got experience and heart. Um, I think uh, when it when it was adversity in, in the, uh, t- the series that they've been uh, playing in, uh, and they fought through it. And quite naturally, that, that's what put, will push them to this point. Um, this team plays better defense than they played the last time they were in the uh, uh, finals. That's due to Rick Carlisle. This team um, is uh, a lot smarter um, than, than they, they were uh, the last time they were in the finals. Um, i, I got to believe that um, uh, with the, the, the firepower and the added defense uh, that they have, um, that 
they're going to put up a good fight against the Heat, and I, I do believe that they're, they're going to prevail, prevail in this game, uh, in the series. Um, it's going to be a tough series, and like I said, toss-up, but I'm going with Dallas, and I don't like LeBron, don't like the Heat, just like you, your cousin. So, um, uh, but, I, but I do like Dallas in this. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing from the jury. You heard from the master. You're hearing from my cousin. You hear, listen, I'm telling you, it's going to be one of the must-see NBA finals in history, in my opinion, because everybody and their mom just despises the Heat for the way they were constructed, the way the decision went down. Everyone wants to see the Heat lose. That could be the driving force or factor behind them winning the championship. But eh, eh, FSP puts his money on the Dallas Mavericks. I'm just saying it, it's, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll lose the Heat in my opinion, but I think it's going to be a closer series than folks think. And I don't see this uh, being done in six by the Heat. Maybe in six by Dallas. Maybe. But I, I, I don't see it going uh, in six to Miami for the simple fact that once they see that adversity against Dallas, they're going to lose the first game on Tuesday. Miami will lose the first game on Tuesday. Then you'll see how they play against uh, against Dallas the next time. Uh, my boy Black says in the chat room, Miami can penetrate that Dallas D, and they have two finishers. True, true. But you got Big Chandler in there who's going to be like, I'm not having it. He'll take his five fouls. He and Brendan Haywood can take their five fouls. <laughs> Did you just say Brendan Haywood? Oh, my hey, goodness. He, hey, for some oh. reason... God. For some reason, Brendan oh. stood up and came up. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to do this real quick, y'all. I got to do this real quick. Now, this is a little interest music. I don't care what people think, but this is what we got. Are you ready? Hey, you think you can tell us what to do? You think you can tell us what to wear? You think that you're better? Well, you better get ready. Bow to the masses. Break it down! Ladies and gentlemen, my homeboy, he's back in the building. Give it up for pretty Ricky! What's up, Rick? Hey, you silly. You silly. What's, that? What, what, what's going on? What's that? Ain't nothing but... Well, what's going on is this. We got my cousin Mike. We got Jerry on the line. We're talking about the Dallas and Heat series. Who do you see winning this series and why? Well, just for kicks, I'm hoping I'm hoping Miami Heat because it seems like everybody that goes to Dallas either has some involvement with drugs or gets indicted on something. So... <laughs> I, we, we're definitely going with Miami Heat along those terms. But, I mean, truthfully, I, I really do think that Miami is going to do their thing. You know, it's not going to be a sweep or nothing like that because Nowitzki really, he put himself out there in that last series that he, he's going to take that team to where they need to be. And they're going to have a problem. They, they're going to have a little problem trying to stop him. I mean, I don't care who they put on him. Somebody else is gonna be open. If if Bosch is on him, it's it's like a mismatch in the in the whiskey's favor, you know. But at the same token, they gotta worry about LeBron and they gotta worry about Wade. And it's gonna be a thing as to where LeBron's gonna take them to the where he needs to, to where they need to go for that man to get an endorsement from Scottie Pippen, which was the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. But oh, thank you. we talked thank about you. that earlier. Thank you. For, for about him, it earlier. Yeah, for, for Scottie Pippen to go, and, and I put this on my Facebook page too, it's how can you play with the greatest player and sit there and disrespect that man all in the same breath? That's that's crazy to me. And I'm, I'm not even a Michael Jordan fan. I just like what he did, you know. But he LeBron's putting his name out there. 
he's putting his name out there. So I'm, I'm gonna give it to the Heat. Maybe it's six games, but it's what? not. It's definitely yeah. I'm gonna give it to him. It's six games because Dallas ain't gonna come out there and be no slouch. They've been to the finals before. You know what I'm saying? Just like LeBron yeah. has. But yeah. I gotta give it to the Heat because Wade has his ring under the belt. Ain't nobody who who on Dallas squad got a ring. Thank you. And, Everybody on oh. Dallas squad. Everybody on Dallas squad been to the championship, smelt it, and choked. And choked. Yeah, Terry choked. The whiskey okay. choked. Jason Kidd so, choked. So, right. So, just, so just, there's just, nobody just, there. Right. Just like you were saying, all that experience, Dallas got this <laughs> and that. That that experience go both ways, Slim. It do. It, it, go, it go both ways. Both ways. But it, it's <laughs> definitely in the favor of. It's definitely in the favor of Miami when you got a coach up there that's. Been the, been the, I mean, well, I'm sorry, not a coach, but when you got a, a part owner up there, president that's been there three or four times and won, you got a guard that's been there now twice and he's got one. You got LeBron been there twice. Hopefully he'll get one. They, they got, they got the upper hand. Okay. First of all, Jerry, I think my cousin and Ricky are on that LSD. We got to give them some medication because they're saying we on some drugs. But it's okay. Now, I'm going to put it to you this way, both of y'all. I want y'all, to, I want y'all to pay attention now. You mentioned that Pat Riley, Ricky did, that Pat Riley's been there multiple times. Yes, with the Lakers, he's won the ring three times. He's won uh, one with the Heat. Coach, and one with the Heat. Uh, you have a coach who has never taken a team to the championship, has never been a coach in the NBA until this year, uh, leading the – the Miami Heat right now, with a team that has one, no, two players with rings. That's, uh, uh, I keep forgetting the kid's name, Hamlin, Ham, Hazlitt, whatever his name is. Haslam. Uh, Haslam and, and Dwayne Wade. Okay, got it. Roger, got that. Other than that, there is no experience on that team. Pat Riley's not coaching the team, so you can forget about Pat yeah. Riley's influence. Wait a minute now. You can forget about Pat Riley's influence on the team on the floor. He's not coming down out of his office to give okay. Coach okay. Eric pointers. Now, okay. um, mm-hmm. the point the point about, you know, Jason Terry, Chandler, Swakovich, uh, Jason Kidd, and all these guys, yeah, they've been to the championship. They've had the experience. They've suffered the defeat. However, however, there are more players on the Dallas Mavericks team that have worked together and have made a cohesive unit than there is on Miami. Now, Greta Sarfis so just got there this year. Hayward got there this year. Marion got there this year. Um, and and uh, excuse me. And Chandler got there this year. Got it. But you see these players working well together on a night-in, night-out basis. And for my money, for my money, I see a better cohesive unit designed and coached by a coach that has that experience because uh, Carlisle, Carlisle. Uh, 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 uh-huh. Several years, he's had uh-huh. bad teams and taken those bad teams to the playoffs and through the playoffs. Now oh, they didn't make man. it all the way to the championship. Right. They didn't make it to the championship. Oh but, man! But Carlisle has that experience in dealing with these folks. That's all I'm saying about that. Uh, I'll let oh. you get yours in, and then Jerry, make sure you jump in and support me. Oh man! <laughs> did, did, did you say Carlisle had a ring? I didn't say Carlisle had a ring. I did not say oh, that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. man. All, right. All I got to say is everybody has their opinion. Some someone's got to be wrong here. There's two. There's two dissenting. Uh, um, two people that don't know what they're talking about on here. There's four, oh, 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 oh. there's four people on here. There's two people that don't know what they're talking about. And until the finals is over, we won't find out who those two people are. Uh, that, hey, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. All right, okay, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. Uh, two things I got to do. We got 45 minutes left. I still want to talk basketball, just a, a hair. 
uh, before I get to MMA and I get to uh, college football, uh, pro football, and fantasy basketball, uh, fantasy baseball, because I made a promise to the folks in my fantasy league I was going to talk about uh, some fantasy baseball today. Uh, now, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. When you look at the whole gambit of, of what Miami had to go through to get to the championship and what Dallas had to go through to get to the championship, you saw that Miami, they, they, they went 4-1 all the way through. 4-1. Okay, they won all their series in five games. They had never beaten any team that they played in these playoffs. Well, one time, they beat, um, I believe it was, it was Atlanta. They were 1-3 with in the regular season, but they had lost previously to all the other teams they played this uh, upcoming, I mean, this, this uh, playoff. And they've turned around and won. Some people might say that the trend's going to gonna stay uh, this time because right now they're 0-3 this season versus uh, Dallas. Now, Miami has a, a home court advantage, but I honestly don't think that it's going to be that big of a deal because once Dallas steals that one in Miami, it's going to be extremely tough, tough for them to go down to Dallas and win a game. What do you think about the home court advantage, Michael? Uh, it, it, makes, it makes no difference. It makes no difference. The NBA, what all of you should know, the NBA is a talent league. There you go. You don't have the talent. You don't have the talent. You don't win. I there don't you go. How much experience you have, it, 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 it makes no, it makes no difference. And and Miami is just showing that to you, game in, game out. You know what I mean? That's what this, that's what this league is, you know, driven upon. You know, all those dudes you name, the kid, they got, they got tons of experience. Jason Kidd, tons of experience. Rick Carlisle, tons of experience. But you cannot beat the the model of the NBA. There you it, go. It, you ain't gonna beat it. Talent wins. <laughs> there Talent you go. Wins. You could be a cohesive unit all you want, but if you ain't got if you don't have more talent on your side than the other side, you're going to have to work that much, much more harder. And guess what? Let me tell you, that boy LeBron, even though I don't like him, you know what I mean, he, he done stepped up some more. He done stepped up some more. Wade, no, Wade is going to step up. There's no doubt in my mind. That dude is clutch. Chris Barr, he's going to step up. All those dudes are going to step up, and those are the only three you really need to step up. And those right. three have more talent on that side of the ball than Dallas does. Wow. Okay, here's, here's a little women, Rick, because I got another person on the line, but I'm going to say this first. I'm going I'm to dispute what you just said big time, and I'm going to point to a team. Let's look at the Boston Celtics of the 80s. Kevin McHale, Big Chief Parrish, Larry Bird, those guys were extremely talented, they worked their butts off, and they worked as a unit to win their titles. If you look at the Detroit Pistons, the Detroit Pistons were not a extremely talented team, but they worked as a cohesive unit and won their titles. L.A. was an extremely talented team. They won their titles, too. But if you look at people putting in work as a unit, as a unit, Big Chief and them folks, I mean... Kevin McHale, he come, wasn't come, all that. Come, come on, cuz really, yep, really, I love really, you, but really, really, <laughs> how many, how yep. many, how many titles the Lakers have? Come on, man, really, how many titles about... all those other teams have? I Big. mean, I'm not knocking what they did. You know, Detroit pulled off too. I, I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but. You still, you still, you still showing me more, uh, showing me more credibility to what I'm saying. Cause yeah. the Lakers had more titles. Vic, you got to understand. No, 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 no. They had more titles. Vic, you yeah, got to understand. Listen, listen. What I'm saying. You got to understand. Listen, Vic. listen, listen. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna bring in Mike Knox real quick. But 
Uh, I still man, got Jay on the line. Not. Since Jay is on the line, he and I, well, Mike, you older than me, but uh, but Jay was around at uh, our age when they were winning this stuff. So, Jerry, what do you think about what I just said? Well, well like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, two, there's two people on here now that have no clue what the hell they're talking about and two people that do. Now, let me, let, me, let me break this down to you real quick. Oh, um, man. Now, in the playoffs, their first opponent was Portland, uh, a young and upcoming team. Uh, Miami Heat. Their first opponent coming up. Their third was a young and up and coming team in Philadelphia 76. You can say you can say Portland and Philadelphia were comparable teams to each other. Okay? The next opponent. Now this is how close this series is going to be. The next opponent. Los Angeles Lakers, uh, the Dallas Mavericks beat in, in four games. They were the previous two time world champions, right? The Miami Heat. They go up against Boston, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't Boston play the Lakers last year? If I'm yes, not mistaken. Did. Okay. So they were in the finals of last year. Now, both these teams, first round, they played two up-and-coming young teams, and he got rid of them. Second round, both these teams played the two teams that were in the finals last year, and they got rid of them. Now the third round, Dallas plays the Oklahoma City Thunder. Young guns. Two guys, two teams, uh, this team is an up-and-coming team. A lot of people thought they were going to make the next move and go to the finals. Um, and they didn't. Dallas the staff to them. Miami Heat, in turn, plays another up-and-coming team in the East, the Chicago Bulls. Young Guns coming up. People thought they were going to the finals. This is how close this series is. If you look at what they went through from each uh, conference, they went through the same scenario. They went through the same scenario coming to this point, this is going to be a very close series. I still say I like the Dallas Mavericks over the Miami Heat, but it could go either way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let me bring in Mike Knox. Let me bring in Mike Knox. We have a full cast of uh, characters on this show real quick. Mike Knox, talk to me. Real fast, just listening, doing some house cleaning. Just want a couple, a couple points you said. First, starting back with the Carlisle situation. Brother, are you on PTP? That man choked every single time that he's had a team. Second, he had the Detroit Pistons. Remember, that team was a team that just came off of a championship, and they failed. Choked. They fell because of him. Because the they, they, now, they couldn't deal with his style. Now, well, go the, ahead. The Heat, okay, um, was, was just a better team, man. Okay, and then you talked about the 80s thing. I, I'm with your cousin on there. Talent beats anything. Everybody knows I'm a Bulls fan here and there. But also to touch on what Jerry just said, real talk, Jerry, nobody thought the Bulls would get this far. They nope. overachieved. Okay, but everything you said, I ain't going to lie to you. Like my pastor, I like what you said. I'm going to take it and use it on my show. That was great what you said, all the scenarios they both went through. I'm going to give you credit, but I'm going to take that. Okay, now. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, Vic, you talked about the 80s and how your cousin said, you know, you said, again, the PCP reference. Paul, oh, my God. The Lakers in the 80s, them teams were full of talent. The Detroit Pistons that Michael Jordan couldn't beat because that 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 ungrateful ingrate by Scottie Pippen, who could have migraine headaches, couldn't get past that team. All those teams had great players and they were great teams. Now No, no, no. What I'm saying is I'm talking about talent wise. The Boston Celtics that Boston had team was full they, of they, they, had Larry Bird, you had Kevin McCann, you had Dennis Johnson. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, but but again, if Dennis Johnson or Kevin McHale the dominant players, like we're talking about today, or we're talking about the players and in those, uh, players in those prime. Kev, Kevin McHale was not a dominant player back then. Kevin McHale was a role player. He just was a like, role player. Just, Kevin McHale was Kevin Love today. He was 25 and 12 every night. Okay, Kevin Love. Kevin Love, great. That's a great point. But is Kevin Love mentioned in the same breath as Dirk Nowitzki, uh, uh, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, even Chris Bosh? No, what he is not. That? But what you're saying, I, I called because what you were saying, you were going against your cousin. Your cousin, you just made my point for me. Dirk Nowinski, by himself, cannot beat Chevron, Christina, he and DeJuan Wade. He just He's can't. not going to be by himself. He is. He's by himself, brother. He is by himself. 
Okay, Sean Marion, over right here and washed up. And I got to go finish cleaning up. Back to the show. Great show, guys. Love you. Peace out, Mike Knox. <laughs> Mike Knox, whatever, dog. Mike Knox. I love he, Mike Knox. He, he, he he's got wrong point. again. He got good point. point. Good point, Ricky. Listen, he, Vic, uh, we're look. talking about we're, we're talking about players here that Vic. that are. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Think about start. it, Vic. And Jerry said it too. Now the first series Dallas played who? Uh, Portland. Portland, Portland which Portland. was uh, just like he said, up and coming. And mm-hmm. uh, Miami played Philly. Both of them up and coming, so that's even. Then the second series, Dallas who Dallas play who? The Lakers. The Lakers yeah, are old. The, 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 Lakers, champions. the Lakers are old. They got swept. Kicked them out. Um, Miami played who? Boston. Old, and they're old. old. They got swept, Good just season. like you said. So that yeah, was even. Boston won a game or two. What they're, are you talking they're about? They're old. That's the whole point. Both, old, both teams Boston. are old. They okay, got right. kicked okay, out. Boston been, Boston been running for the past four years. Boston too. been running from four to six. They got a ring. They're right. old. They're done. Same hey. thing with the Lakers. They're old. They're done. Right. Now the third series, just like you say, Dallas played Oklahoma City. Young Gunners came out there, got ahead of themselves. They got beat. Uh, same thing, just like he said with the Bulls. The Bulls overachieved. Nobody expected the Bulls to do what they did this year, but they Actually, didn't. we said it on this show. We said it on this show that right. the Bulls uh, might be the team out of the, out of the East. We but actually they, said that, though. So. But they still young gunners. They young gunners, and they got ahead of themselves. What happened? They got kicked out. Now, if you get to the finals, you still have Miami. Miami's average age is what, 30, 31? Compared to what? Dallas average age is what? How old is Nowitzki now? 32. How old I is Jay- Dallas? Dallas's average age is about 32, 33 years 32, old. 32, 33. Now so think about it. a two or three year difference. There's a two, a two or three, or three year, difference. year difference. Dallas is now the Lakers and the Celtics, while Miami is Oklahoma City and Chicago. Them young boys down there, they're going to knock Dallas out. Dallas not going to make it easy, but at the same time, LeBron won. He's been under scrutiny all year. He shouldn't have left Cleveland. Everybody say that. He ducked He ducked the Bulls. He ducked the Knicks. Everybody was saying he should have went to one of them. He, he punished both of them. Punished them. He punished the Bulls in the playoffs, and he punished the Knicks during the season. Everybody now is going to New York and just killing their stadium. They're killing Madison Square Garden. So now all LeBron has to do is get his ring. And what they're going to say? That they couldn't yeah. do what everybody said they wasn't going to do at the beginning. They said, how long would it take them to mess? Two or three years. They are in the championship after getting together for one year. And if you one pay attention year. to the game, look at the running and gunning and the style of play that Miami is using. Don't sit here and no. tell me you no, do no, not no, no, no. see Pat Riley no. written no. all over the game plan. <laughs> Yeah, when yeah, he was when yeah, he was no, the coach no. of the Lakers, hold on. No. When he was the coach of the Lakers, he had Magic, he had Cooper, he had uh, what's my man's name, Kareem, and he had the other guy. He had four dominating Bird. players. Okay, took him to the ra- took him to the rings. He did the same thing with New York. New York didn't get the rings, but look who he had out there: Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Anthony Mason. Now. He goes to Miami. What did he do? He got a ring with them with who? D. Wade, Shaquille O'Neal. Who else was on the team with them? Gary Payton. Gary uh, Payton. Look who he uh, had. Now you got three of the most dumb. Not even three. It's really two and a half because I still ain't respecting Chris Bosh like that. I'm I'm, going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there and, and prove a point and prove a big point. All those teams that you mentioned about Pat Riley having or being associated with, had dominant big men. Dominant Vic. big men. Vic. Miami he's does not have dominant need big a, men. He's got a dominant big man. When you got Ooh. LeBron James Ooh. running up and down the floor like he a center and a guard, that's a big man. When you got Kareem Dog. putting the boards up and you got Magic giving assists, that's one big man. When you got Anthony Mason doing the same thing Patrick did and John Starks running the floor, that's a big man. When you got Shaq boarding it up, putting up blocks, who's getting garbage, the board? and you got who's Dwayne Wade and Gary Miami? Payton, that's who, a big who, who, man. Who, who, who's the cleanup man and the board guy from Miami right now? Who is LeBron. It? LeBron. LeBron. Chris Bosh. 
don't, Definitely they, not Chris Bosh. You can, not Chris Bosh. All they want Chris Bosh to do is get boards. You know he ain't going to score like that, but yet still, he came he's out there and popped 34 one night. He's not getting no boards over... I'll even say it. He's not getting them boards over Brendan Haywood. He's not getting them boards over... Are you kidding? Are you kidding? He's Brendan not Haywood is the soft big man that Washington hey, used dog. to have. Dude is a okay. The boy like a buttercup, Vic. I'm here, I'm here in D.C. I watch that dude. I watch you know him. I watch him, too. Watch him. Rooted for him. Get some heart sometimes. Some Rooted. Way, somehow, thug it out. Shoot, I was happy when he was fighting. Uh, what was that boy he was fighting with the Wizards? Because he was fighting somebody. Was oh, like, JaVale oh, McGee? Yeah. I was McGee. Like, oh, my God, and McGee dominated oh the boy. Dominated. Yeah, was, Come on, Vic. Like, oh McGee, for real. McGee, it's, it's, McGee it's plays harder than Chris Boss. Listen, listen. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I got to move on to the other subject matter. But here's the point. Here's my point. That uh, we were looking at a whole bunch of mess. That just like Jerry said, there are four people on this line right now. Two of them right. Two of them wrong. I, we'll find out once the series is over with. Just to go off of what you just now said, I still have the message that was left on my phone from last football season from the man that you claim is right or wrong. And I'm going to leave it like that because we all know how that scenario turned out. Ain't he still looking for number one? He's still looking for number one. That's the whole thing. Hey, look, you got to break that down just a little bit so I can know because I'm, I'm, I, I didn't the, see the, about that one. There was a message uh, uh, put my, on my hold on, hold on, personal Ricky, phone. Ricky, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Mike, you got to play fantasy football with us this year, and you'll understand what he's talking about. I'll play the message for you right now if you want. No, don't play the dang okay. thing right now. All right. <laughs> We're not even on football. Once we get to football, we'll talk about it. I don't Jay, want I, Jerry went quiet on this, so I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone. No, 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 no I'm, I'm, I'm glad Ricky's back. I'm kind of shocked because I haven't heard. I thought the man disappeared off the face of the earth. You know, <laughs> because because football season is doing what it's doing. I've been trying to talk to the owners and talk to Goodell and find out why all the players getting in trouble and figure out if Ray Lewis was predicting futures by saying that all the crime waves gonna start. But, uh, you know, slowly but surely, I got my mindset back. <laughs> All right, well, here, here we go. Speaking of mindset, speaking of mindset, and I want to switch. I'm still in basketball, but I'm, I'm only going to touch on this subject a little bit. Um, what's the mindset of Kobe Bryant? Uh, here's the situation. He wanted Brian Shaw to be the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. They went out and got, uh, got Brown, formerly of the Cleveland Brown, I mean, yeah, Cleveland Cavaliers, who coached. Uh, LeBron James, who LeBron James didn't want to get uh, let go, but, you know, something had to change. So uh, I'm going to go around the panel real quick. I'm going to start with Jerry, Rick, then Mike. Do you think the team should have listened to Kobe Bryant, or is this a sign that since Kobe's about, what, 32, 33 right now, that uh, they're ready to move on in a new direction after his contract is up? Um, they're ready to move on after his contract is up. Um, Kobe Bryant has, has got um, uh, definite problems with uh, his, uh, I think his ankles, if I'm not mistaken. And that, that's from his trainer saying that uh, he, he's got chronic problems with his ankles. So Kobe Bryant, as we've seen this year, um, is on the downside of his career. And even though he happens to be a superstar of the team, um, the bus is meaning Jerry, the uh, owner, and Jim, the uh, uh, the son, who the uh, charge of basketball operations, decided to go in a different direction um, because they figured in the long term Kobe Bryant is not going to be a, uh, a Laker, um, I guess, past his last contract, uh, uh, whatever his, his contract is up. So um, they wanted to put a, get a coach in there that changed the offense and made it a more defensive-minded team uh, and, and not let Kobe Bryant run on uh, rampant like Phil Jackson did when uh, he was there. Okay. All right. Uh, Rick? Um, Kobe's my man, but they ready to move. They, the only reason they bought Mike Brown is, just like they said, they this is the man that's going to be able to beat LeBron. He knows LeBron back and forth. He coached LeBron practically since he came out of the draft. Um 
they know the Heat are going to win this year. And oh, Lord. after this, I mean, once Kobe gets his number six, they're going to move on. He ain't got but, what, a couple years left on that contract, two or three. He's already 32, 33. He got the chronic ankle or knee problem, whichever one it is. And I'm telling you, the, the, it's about the shift out there in the West. That's why Golden State went and got Jerry West because they know once Kobe's gone, it's basically open bid for whoever want to claim California. And they feel as though Jerry West going to do the same thing he did for them that he did with Memphis, and that was amazing this year also, and what he did with the Lakers. So they ready to move. All right. Mike, what's up? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I agree with the brother that just that just spoke. I think uh, <clears throat> Lakers are Lakers are looking to uh, to move on, and I thought it was I thought it was a hell of a move. I thought it was one hell of a move. I mean, I like Brian Shaw, you know, but um, yeah, I, I think it's time. It's time to blow that up and go in another direction. Um, they got you know there, there's whispers about how it's coming, you know, and um, they, Kobe got you know two or three years left on his contract. So, yeah, it's time, it's time for them to move on and, you know, build something else. I don't think that it was a, uh, it was a, you know, it was a shot at Kobe or, you know, or whatever, or a shot or a knock on Brian. I just think that it's more so the Lakers want to go in another direction. They want to go in another direction. No? Okay. I mean, that's understandable. That's why I brought it up because I thought it was interesting that uh, – you know, he made his, his, his feelings well known about who he wanted to coach. And Brian Shaw will be a hot commodity for uh, some young team or some team looking to rebuild. Maybe the Wizards might get him after they get rid of Flip Saunders. But uh, you, you never know. I mean, he, if he brings that style of offense as well as defense to the table and he has the right mix, maybe it'll work. But Mike Brown is a, is a good coach, and the, the question that he has is can he – maintain showtime out in L.A. like they've been, uh, you know, past 20 years or so. No, actually 30-some-odd years that they've been showtime. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, and I want to shift gears right now from basketball to MMA before I get to football and uh, previewing the Master Plan show, which airs tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to talk to Jerry about that. But, uh, we're going to talk a little MMA. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not a big MMA fan, uh, sit back, relax, and listen as I talk to you about it and listen to the sound bites. Um, tonight, uh, Rampage Jackson is going to take on Mark Hamill. Um, Mark Hamill is a – he is uh, certified – I don't say certified, but he pretty much yeah, he's certified deaf. And he is one of the top contenders in the light heavyweight division for the title. And uh, he and, and Rampage, Quentin Rampage Jackson are going to fight tonight. And Rampage is older, more experienced, but he's been prone to uh, being uh, slowly beat. And we're going to hear from Dana White, who is the president of UFC on several subject matters. So just listen to me. Here's what he had to say about uh, Hamilton. Matt Hamill is definitely motivated. This is a life-changing fight for this kid. You know, this kid, he said it at the press conference. You know, he's deaf and, and, and he's battled all these different things. He's like, I've been an underdog my whole life. I love being the underdog going into this fight. I'm going to beat Rampage Jackson, and uh, I'm going to get the big fight. And then Dana had this to say about Quentin Rampage Jackson. There's been a lot of questions about Rampage. Rampage, it, without question, is one of the best 205 pounders in the world, you know. He's, uh, he's been doing movies. He's been taking some time off. The guy's made a lot of money. The question is, it, you know, does he still have that fire? This is a big fight for him. He beats Matt Hamill on Saturday night. It puts him right in line. He'll probably get the next title shot at John Jones. Now, with that said, because John Jones is supposed to be fighting Rashad Jackson, but John Jones uh, got hurt, and Rashad Jackson, uh, I believe, also got hurt. And 
uh, that that's a telling sign that Dana White even believes that John Jones is going to knock out Rashad uh, Jackson. I hope he does because I hate freaking Rashad. Um, but here's a here's the way Dana White sees the fight going. He's going to make Rampage worried about his shots because uh, everybody knows Rampage has knockout power in both hands, and uh, he's going to come after Hamill and, and, and try to knock him out. I think Hamill's going to try to use his wrestling, but Rampage is a great wrestler too. So yeah, it's going to be usually when two great wrestlers face each other, they use, usually end up in the standoff with the wrestling and usually end up punching it out. I don't want to see a boxing match in an MMA fight, but both fellas have heavy hands. Both of them do. So we'll see what happens. But uh, here's Dana White one last time on the possibility. I don't know if you guys are wrestling fans out there, but Brock Lesnar and, and Bobby Lashley are former WWE superstars. Brock Lesnar has become a legitimate mixed martial arts uh, heavyweight champion. Bobby Lashley, he has potential, but he just isn't ready for it. But this is why Dana White says, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley will never face each other. Bobby Lashley never really made it to the level that Brock Lesnar did. Trust me, if you're a WWE fan and you like Brock Lesnar, when Brock gets over this illness, he's going to be fighting the best fighters in the world. The guy's done amazing things in a short period of time, and uh, a lot of people look forward to seeing him come back very soon. Again, Brock Lesnar is uh, he's supposed to be fighting Junior DeSantos. Uh, he got sick, and the Tough Enough finale got pushed off just a little bit. But uh, Bobby Lashley is just, as Dana White said, is just not at the level of Brock Lesnar. Now, tonight's card is, is it's not that heavy. It's got a couple of great fights on it. Um, I would say catch it on Hulu or catch it on YouTube or something like that. I personally would not pay for it. I don't have to because of who I work for and where I'm at. But the, the point being that if you're an MMA fighter or you're an MMA person, this is going to be a good fight to watch, not pay for, but watch, because Rampage is, is a junkyard dog. Basically, he walks to the ring, the DMX's uh, song every time. He's got his, his little uh, uh, chain necklace. He's, he's a fighter. He's a scrapper. And if you bang with him, it's going to be a good fight. And Hamill... Uh, or Hamilton, is a good fighter. So it, it's possibility that it, it can be a, a good fight. I just wouldn't pay for it. Uh, I usually do a little bit more breaking down of the fights, but I only got 17 minutes left of live air. I want to talk about the NFL and uh, college football real quick. So uh, you guys got anything you want to add to MMA or no? Nope. All right. No. Let's move. I I don't even know who Mark Hamill is. I thought you were talking about Luke Skywalker. Oh, my God. I know Hamill is a, is a fill-in uh, fill because of uh, the other fight, fighter uh, got um, uh, banned because of drugs or something like that. So um, Yes, it was uh, Chael Sonnen. It was, no, it wasn't Chael, it wasn't Chael uh, Sonnen. It was um, uh, Vita Belfort. Vita yeah. Belfort. He, uh, he got popped for performance-enhancing drugs. But Hamill, uh, he's been working up for this fight for a while. He's on a five-fight win streak. All right, let's move on to college football. Uh, I wish Black were on the line because this is his baby and we talk about it. But uh, Oklahoma Sooners are going to be your preseason number one team in college football. They boast a very, very strong backfield. Quarterback's decent, but we all know if you follow college football that Stoops, for some reason, he always gets that one L during the season and he just can't win a bowl game. He finally won one last year. But uh, do you guys see Oklahoma winning the college football national championship? And if not, who do you think is going to win? I'll go with uh, Jerry, Rick, then uh, Mike. Um, in my opinion, it's too early to take that. I, I, need, I need more info. <clears throat> right now, I need more info before I can even uh, go that route. So I have to defer to uh, either Mike or Rick. 
Okay. I'm I'm on the same boat with Jerry. It's, I've been on football hiatus after the sad, sad lockout news. So who did the lockout? But geez, I I just don't I don't know. I don't think they will though. I haven't seen Oklahoma do anything at all. Yeah. I, okay. I'm I, I'm more so with the fellas too. I. I because I've been on football hiatus because I just can't take any more bad news <laughs> about the NFL or anything. I mean, I'm really I'm really hurting over here. So yeah. I just kind of just, you know, stayed out of it. But um I, I I do I do need to see I do need to see the see the uh see the teams play. I need to see them play. You know, I, okay. I don't want to speculate on it cuz I, I want to see them play. Okay. We'll talk about it in a second. We got a call from the six six one, different area code for me. Never seen this one before. But from the six six one, welcome to Fantasy Sports Politics. Please state your name. Hey, this is Matt from California. What's up, Matt from California? He's the big Laker guy, and he just missed us talking about the bag on Lakers, young man. Yeah, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing. I'm doing pretty okay for the Lakers, second this year, but um. Uh, they really could have actually played out way decent, but it was definitely disappointing for expectations. And I'm really kind of, really kind of mad about them hiring Brown over Adelman, but we'll see how that works out. Well, we just talked about that. What are your thoughts on Brown, and why do you think they shouldn't have hired him, and why, and who do you think they should have hired? Um, I'm really mad about Brown because. Um, when he was in Cleveland, he basically relied on LeBron. He basically relied on LeBron the entire time over there. He really didn't coach. He was a good defensive coach, but for them to improve, they actually need some sort of offense, I think, in order to improve down the line. And they could have hired Adelman, who's a really strong offensive coach, and he's really gotten championship. Um, he's really succeeded on a getting championship experience and stuff like that. And if the Lakers are gonna hire a new coach they definitely need a they definitely need a coach with a resume and Adelman fits that description. Well Adelman has had issues everywhere he goes and people don't follow him like he had a, a, a raw deal in Houston because Yao Ming uh just couldn't stay healthy. Uh, Trace McGrady was a wash um, and after that, we didn't have anything else for uh, for him in Houston. But uh, hey, it is what it is. I mean, that's your opinion, and you're you're, you're good. You're good. I, I like it. it. It is what it is. We don't censor everybody that comes on the show. Some people got to get censored though. But uh, it's all good, uh, Matt. Now, real quickly, uh, do you have any thoughts on the college football season before I go to professional football? Uh, do you think Oklahoma? Do you think Oklahoma has a chance at winning the national championship? Since they're last year, they were ranked number one in preseason, and uh, this year it's the same. So, do you think they have a chance? I mean, I think they do. They got a solid football team, and even though they got a lot of players going in the NFL, I think that they have plenty of depth, and I think they have a shot at at not only appearing in the championship, but I think they have a decent shot at winning it. And even though they've never, the team that I'm about to mention, they've never gotten a chance, but they really deserve one is uh, Boise State. Hold on, hold on. I got a lot of static going on here. Go ahead. So you said Boise State? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll be able to actually appear because of the whole BCS stuff. But I think they're definitely a deserving team, and... I think that they would have possibly made it last year if Brotson made that field goal, but it remains to be seen whether they'll be able to make it in the championship. That's, that'll definitely be interesting to watch. But as far as Oklahoma goes, I think that I think they're a favorite to win all next year. Okay. I, I don't like Oklahoma winning it all. I don't think they're going to do it. I think it's either going to be Alabama or Oregon. Uh, I think Oregon actually is going to have a better chance coming out of the Pac-10 than anybody else uh, coming. And uh, the way they play, 
and that running back is returning and the quarterback's returning. Uh, they lost a couple of players on defense, but I think Oregon has a great shot, as well as Alabama. But uh, since we don't have that much uh, college football experience on the line, we're not going to talk about it in depth. We'll go into professional football. And since we're going to professional football, there's two things I got to hit. Two things I got to hit. First, I'm going to hit this. And then I'm going to hit this. Carrying the ball 20 times a game requires power and valor, not niftiness. The water bug and whippet backs rarely survive the wail and howl of the banshee. Stack defenses in the pros. They must meld the buck of a billy goat with a sudden surge of a sprint. He does not move with polish or slickness. His method is not Grand Prix, but demolition derby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's talk about the NFL right now. They're in a lockout. you got people doing all crazy things. But the hot topic, the hot topic as of late is coming out of Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cedric Benson a little while ago stated that uh, even if Carson Palmer decided he wanted to come back to Cincinnati, that he should not because he would be considered a bad vibe or bad cancer to the team. And then, and then, early in this week, Tank Johnson said he agreed wholeheartedly with that statement. Tank Johnson went as far as to mention how players felt about Terrell Owens and Chad uh, Ocho Cinco, now to be Johnson right now, uh, how they felt about them coming off of their TV shows straight in the camp. So my question to you guys would be this, and I'm going to start with Jerry. What do you think should happen with Chad, I mean, with Chad Johnson, with Carson Palmer, and Cincinnati? Should they let Carson retire and just pay him the money, or, or what? Talk to me. Well, I'll, I'll put my uh, GM hat on, and I'm not my ground GM, I'll put my GM hat on. If I have a player that I, I feel that doesn't want to be there, and um, I try to force him to be there, uh, he's not going to perform to, to, uh, uh, to, the, to the standard that I want him to, to perform at. Um, I'd rather take him while he's got the most value and get a player that I can best use to replace him, not as a quarterback, but some other players, because I, I, I just drafted a young quarterback to improve my team. Along with the um, wide receiver, uh, he's been a somewhat disruptive force on the team. His uh, skills, I feel, are just uh, eroding. So I'm going to release him and let him go on his way and um, find another home if he can. And um, um, I, I won't be able to get any kind of value for him because uh, a lot of people, I guess, I gather in the league probably think his, his uh, skills are eroding too. So they, they're going to lowball me on any kind of value. So I just let, I'll release him and, and I'll try to trade my quarterback to get the most out of him um, while I still can. Okay. I know that uh, Ricky loves this guy, so we're going to talk about him. Ricky, Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer and Chad Ochocinco. Will either one of them be back in Cincinnati? With the, they drafted A.J. Green, and they drafted uh, uh, Kil, not Kilpatrick, um, uh, the kid out of, Andy, out of TCU. Andy, yeah. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, there you go. I'm, Just I'm a, a just to piggyback on uh, what Jerry said, Carson Palmer didn't have any value since he came out of the draft. That's the last time he had value. So I don't care what they do with this cat. The two years that I drafted him, I paid for it. He needs to go because truthfully, think about it. And Larry Johnson ain't no better. I mean, not Larry Johnson, uh, Cedric Benson. He's no better, but he does make a point. Those two are the last two that have been there as part of that curse. 
they have been through all the problems. I still think the quarterback needs to lead, and Carson Palmer, rightfully so, does want to leave and go somewhere where he feels as though his talents are going to be respected. Chad hasn't respected him for a couple of years now. Um, his whole thing with Chad is do your job and get open and stop mouthing off like he's supposed to. They're bickering. That's what you do when you're in school. Let both of them go. Start fresh. Let that young boy Dalton get out there. Let the wide receiver they draft to get out there. Start fresh. Let those other vets start taking over that locker room because this year here is going to be Marvin Lewis last year if they put up another six or below win season. They're okay, done. on. Okay, well, Marvin just signed a, a new contract, so even care. if he's done, they're gonna have to pay him. But well, here's my question. Okay, I got you. I got you, Mike. Here's the question: Since you brought, since Ricky brought up Marvin Lewis, all right, uh, Carson, when they resigned Marvin, stated that he wanted to he wanted to retire or be traded. Chad Ochocinco recently said that uh, he nicknamed the bull he rode Marvin because anything that comes out of Marvin Lewis's mouth is BS. What do you think about that, Mike? Well, I, I think um, Cincinnati has, you know, has long been a, a circus town. You know, it, it's long been a circus town, and um, I think Carson Palmer. I, I, I'm, I'm siding with Carson a little bit because now he's starting to act like the atmosphere that he's been in for years. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I, I definitely think he should go. He definitely should go, but not because I want, you know, I want to see, you know, something good turn out for Cincinnati. It's because I want to see something good turn out for Carson Palmer because they got a perfect, they got a perfect circus of fools out there, man. I mean, and it just keeps going on and on. And then you bring in, you bring in this blue chip youngin, i.e. Carson Palmer, and you got Cedric Benson, and now you got, you got people saying that, because he said what he felt, you know, he's going to be a problem. Tank Johnson, really? Come on, Slim, really? You you, you saying it's going to be dissent? No. Carson Palmer is tired of that nonsense. I think, he should, I think they should trade him. But the problem for Cincinnati is you trade him, you get rid of him, you, you're basically saying you're going to start all over. Because you're not going to win with, without a quarterback. And, and so I, I really think that they should – you know, it, in terms of the locker room, in terms of cohesion, Chad got to go, and uh, Carson, uh, Carson needs to, need to go. Carson, Carson needs to, need to go. All right, turn, I need to turn your radio or your computer or something down, but it's all good. I mean, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, Carson's ready to go. A lot of analysts are saying, yeah, it's about time to let him go. But Cincinnati takes this hard borderline stance against um, trading people and giving it to the man's. So I think they're willing to pay the money as opposed to give this guy his freedom. You know, it's like Amistad. Give us free? Uh-uh. It ain't happening. But, um, that's, that's that. And nothing really much is happening in the uh, NFL other than they're still locked out. Uh, we're getting close to uh, the, the really t hard time where folks need to, you know, be getting prepared for the season and teams are doing their due diligence individually uh, to get things done, but I, I really don't think that we're going to have football. If, if we do, it's not going to be very long. Um, now, real quick, I'm about to go off the air in 90 seconds, so if you want to stick around and listen to the rest of the show, because we're still going to talk about fantasy baseball and a few other things, dial 347-637-3220. That number is 347-637-3220, and we'll talk about it. Uh, in overtime real quick. But what I wanted to get to uh, for you guys is uh, what do you think about this, this uh, entire situation with, uh, with, with I'm not going to say uh, situation, but what do you think the deal is with Reggie Bush in New Orleans now that Mark Ingram has been drafted? Uh, Drew Brees said you need three running backs to succeed in the NFL. Do you really think Reggie Bush is going to stay there and they're going to pick up that uh, $12 or $15 million contract this year? Uh, Ricky, I know that's your boy, so I'll start with you. 
Mike, Vin, Jerry. Just think about it. Do you think Reggie Bush, with the injury problems, is going to get them to realize that he needs to stay there? I don't. I mean, he's been injured, what, almost every year he's been in New Orleans, except for the first. And the first year he couldn't do nothing. So the year he started doing something, which was the second, he got hurt. And that was the big hit from Philly. Then the next year after that, he got hurt. He got hurt again last year. He keeps getting hurt. I don't. They, if they keep him, it's because they want to make Reggie feel like he's wanted. But if they don't, I'm trying to figure out who's going to pick him up. Reggie Bush is the new age Eric Metcalf. Oh, oh, oh. That's a good point. That's what he is. That's a good point. He is. And Eric Metcalf was good in his own right, but he was never a starting running back. He was always on kick returns, getting getting ready and knocking out good returns, but he's not he's not that guy that you need. He's not that guy. So, I, okay. I mean, I, I really can't tell you. They may keep him. It's between him and Pierre Thomas. And truthfully, Pierre Thomas carries the lighter contract. So, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Mike, what you think? Michael. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to put the, I had to put the phone on mute. Um. I think I mean I agree I agree, I agree with my man just now. You know, Reggie just been hurt all the time. You know, even even during the Super Bowl run, he, he was hurt. He was in. He was with the end, with the out. I mean, what, I don't know what was going on with Reggie. Uh, if he's got if he's got a big contract, you can look you can look to New Orleans cutting him. You can look to New Orleans cutting him, and I don't see anybody picking him up and giving him no big contract coming out. I just I don't foresee that, but, uh, you know, there's it's no question that the brothers got plenty of talent. I mean, but at this point, Reggie got to figure out what he want to do. I mean, because he, I mean, cause he, you know, well, you know, he had to give back to Heisman, whatever. He's got a, uh, <laughs> he's got a Super Bowl ring, you know, and he's got paid, and he, you know, and he, and he got, you know, everybody's pent up as his girl. I mean, what, I mean, what else he need? What else he need? Not unless he want to do it. And where are you going to do it at? I, 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 I'm just at a loss with, uh, you know, his value to, to, to the Saints. I don't, I don't see any added value. Even when he was, even when he was at the top of his game, uh-huh. I, I, I didn't see him um, coming to uh, fruition. You know, and, and you know what? You know who, you know who looked good out of the, you know, this whole debacle with Reggie, Charlie Cassidy. Everybody went on Charlie yeah. Cassidy because he went, he passed on him and got that boy uh, Mario for yep. Houston, and everybody was pissed, you know. But that was a good move. That was a hell of a move. One hell yeah. of a move. And I wish he was my general manager over here with the Boston Red I'm gonna tell you that right now. He was, but you know, Dave Schneider fired him, so it is what it is. But let me get to the master. Because uh, we got to lead into another segment once he's done. Master, talk to him. Okay. Reggie Bush already said that he's willing to take a pay cut. Reggie Bush is, is, is in my opinion, uh, going to be a uh, special teams player and a situational type uh, of back in the backfield. They'll, they'll keep Reggie Bush because he's, a, he's got big playability. Uh, and they, they limit his touches, so it's just less um, – less, uh, uh, injury risk. The uh, running backs in the backfield, Pierre Thomas, Mark Ingram, and uh, Chris Ivey may be the odd man out. Um, uh, but that's that's how I see it. I, I see Reggie Bush being kept with the, uh, uh, um, his cut, his pay getting cut, um, and, and, and and excelling on uh, special teams. Okay. Now, with that, we got to promo this before I get to fantasy baseball because I missed it on live there. But I'm going to promo this. Ladies and gentlemen, joining the FSP radio family, the world premiere of The Master Plan. And I'm going to just play a little intro thing for y'all so you know what it sounds like. Here's what The Master Plan 
sounds like. Jerry comes on, it's just him against the world, y'all. The master plan, Jerry Taylor. Jerry, promo the show that's coming on tomorrow, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's, all, it's all about the master plan. It's about any subject you want to talk about, um, any subject I want to talk about. We're going to be talking about sports, entertainment, politics, whatever comes in my mind. You bring it out, we'll talk about it uh, next week, tomorrow. We're going to talk about it. If you're a thug, I want to talk to you. If you're a good girl who likes thugs or a thug who likes good girls, I want to talk to you. That's the subject and theme of the mall, good girls and why they attract the thugs and bad boys. <laughs> now, my, now, my cousin, my cousin, he's a part of a group and uh, grown so, uh, and real grown, so grown, grown, grown soul and real talk. And uh, they're also on Blog Talk Radio, and they have subject matter such as this. So, my cousin, my cousin, my cousin, what can you advise Jerry on when he goes into this topic that he's going to talk about tomorrow? Well, one of the things we were talking about last week, we were talking about the, uh, the two sisters that, uh, that are in Harvard that, uh, that got together, and um, they, they robbed a... Uh, they robbed a drug dealer. They robbed the Ivy League drug dealer or whatever. The two black sisters, and they both were, um, you know, they both were well schooled. You know, both were well schooled. But one of them, came, you know, came straight out the project. But you know, her academics was was very, you know, was very exceptional. And then another young lady, uh, the other young lady, um, she got picked. You know, she went to different academies or whatever. And. Um, and um, what 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 happened? What, what ultimately wound up happening is. You know, they, they, they were um, influenced by uh, thugs. You know what I mean? Thugs, drug dealers, and, and and no one was the wiser. No one, no one expected them to be, you know, in that game or whatever. So, um, you know, one of the things I want to say, just go ahead and, um, you know, check that check that story out. That would that would be good. That would be a good addition to um, what you're talking about um, tomorrow. Um, another thing too, you want. You, you want to have many? As, you want to talk to many women as you possibly can. <laughs> well, you know how Jerry is. He's a player, so he's gonna try to talk to as many women as he can anyway. But Jerry, finish talking about the show. I, I just told my cousin to give you a little heads up on on you know the subject matter since they deal with it on a day to day basis. Well, I, I think I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm I got a, a clue on what he's talking about here because I'm sitting in front of an article here uh, 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 of a girl or two girls. One named Brittany Smith, who uh, happened to be at Harvard. Who got yeah, up with, yeah, uh, her that's boyfriend. them. That's okay. them. I couldn't remember their name. You're right. I, I got it in front of me right now, so we're on the same page here. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's starting Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why do you good girls like bad guys? I forgot to sing the song. That's why I had to sing it because I don't remember. But anyway, and, that's the subject and, matter. Ten o'clock in the morning, ten thirty, ten to ten thirty a.m. Sunday oh, morning. Man, he's cutting into my hey. Joel Austin time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna still try to call in. <laughs> I think you better call in, Ricky. Cause my man, why Joel. Huh? Oh, I, that, that, that I said subject that. there. That's that's a subject that that is a very well known topic, and every day. With my own, I get into that type of subject. So I'm hoping that Jerry has a whole lot of people calling in because <laughs> I want to hear views on this. I, I definitely so. want to hear. Okay. Well, you know, again, a new addition to the FSP radio family, The Master Plan, <laughs> hosted by Jerry, 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, real quickly before we go off air, I wanted to say, uh, Grasshopper Gigolos, a.k.a. Josh, and his fluke team, that's flukily in front in my division. 
He defeated the worst team in the league that has the best roster, but half of his team's on the DL. And uh, he was losing the entire week. Sunday, he comes back and wins the game. Same situation here. I'm beating the crap out of Josh all week long. Last night, Josh miraculously takes the lead. I have not looked at our, uh, at our standings right now, but uh, it's a close game, and it's going to come down to Sunday. Uh, I, what I'm telling you folks is this. Fantasy baseball is taking over for my fantasy football. We're still going to do our summer uh, specials with the NFC East, I mean, with the NFC and the AFC, we're going to start it in July, and we're going to run it through August. Uh, one month is going to be, the first month is going to be the AFC, and the second month is going to be the NFC. But uh, right now, fantasy baseball is taking over for my six. It's like my, my cocaine, my, my hair on, uh, whatever you want to call it, to, to get me through the summer, since I might not have football or basketball this winter. But uh, Josh... You're one lucky little devil. The season's only a quarter over, and uh, you're in front. I give you your props. But you flukily, it's a new word, put in the dictionary, it's a new word, are in front in, of me this week, and uh, you somehow, somehow came back and beat uh, the Giants. You shouldn't have, but you did. Um, and I had an awesome team, so whatever. But... Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Is there anything else we're going to talk about tonight uh, on my list? No. So, therefore, therefore, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Uh, is there anything you want to talk about real quick, Mike, before we get off the air? Nah, I just want to go ahead and uh, plug, plug my show real quick. Shameless plug. Join us over at uh, Grown Soul and Real Talk. We have um, plenty of mature conversation with men, women, relationships, politics. You know, whatever, whatever's clever. Um, you can catch us on um, www.facebook.com backslash Grown Soul and every Wednesday night at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we have our Wednesday night live show. Come check it out. And I'm looking to have y'all on my network so I just I'm landing a, a big sponsorship deal so uh, trying to get y'all over here. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, I like money talks, man. You know yeah, I know you know. I know you like money. I was trying to get y'all on board before, but now nah, y'all want to be partners and whatnot. I'm trying to get y'all paid. Let a brother do his thing. So we'll see what happens. But y'all need to come on over to the Media Radio Network where people listen to radio. I got you covered, dog. Ricky, what you got? Nothing. Nothing really. Just, just trying to feel my way back into it. Hopefully be back full time this weekend coming. Trying to get everything together. Just wanna say on one real quick tip though for the for the skins haters. Since all I can do is talk trash until they really say we got football. There's a little article on NFL Network I want uh the master to read about Mr. Rex Ryan taking tips from the greatest Joe Gibbs head coach in football about coaching while there's a work stoppage. I just want you to check that article out on NFL.com. Well, see, uh, uh, um, uh, Mike clued me in yeah. an article, which I already had seen, and Good. Ricky, you clued me, clued me in on an article, which I already had read. So Good. I'm, Good. Uh, I'm there. No, long as you long as you took notes now, so, you know, <laughs> you know, well, you know how him and Rex Ryan go. You know, yeah, yeah, you Ryan, yeah. Like, I, I don't know if y'all still don't do the foot thing this summer. It's just been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I do with that. But, you know, I just want to plug it a little bit. You know, I know how much you don't like the Redskins, even though the Redskins and the Jets are kind of related when we took the greatest back from y'all and made him an anomaly. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. It's cool. We still, it's all well, love, brother. It's still all love. Well, Rick, in, in, on that vein, I, we will take the foot thing uh, in, into the fall when we do play your team, who happens to be in the NFC East, and put it up your, you know what? Let Jerry. Oh, let, oh let, Jerry. Let, Jerry. Hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on, Rick. Hold on. He, he done insulted. He done insulted. I love you, Jerry, 
But you deserve <laughs> this. Ooh. Ooh. I can't, I, I can't yeah. say too much because I ain't been on here in a while. But I just, I just know the last time Jerry made all these comments, <laughs> you know, it, it, every time it never fares out well. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that 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 block of time and see if I can get it off of my phone. I don't, it's stuck on there. If I play it, it'll tell you message saved for a hundred and one days. This is the only message that can be saved for a hundred plus days. Every other message on my phone gets twenty days. Uh, you can't tell me about this message, man. I'm, I'm just like conclude it. Good, good. Can I tell him? Can I tell him? Wait a minute. Here's the breakdown, Mike. Can, can, I'll tell him, but if you can pull it up, you can play it. Okay, let um, me see if I can pull it up. <laughs> all right, here's the deal. Here's what happened. As I said, we play fantasy football, right, Mike? Right. And uh, me, Jerry, and Rick, they play in my league, and we play for money, of course. And uh, we were all in the same division. Well, Come to you and back you work. Oh, can never can, mind. can you listen speak. real quick? Go oh, ahead. Did dude. you hear that part? Yes, go. Okay, hold on. Hold on a second. Hey. I don't want to hear all your messages. Saved voice message. Six, two, three, six, three, time. After tomorrow, the division will be mine. You'll be looking at my behind. The master is in effect and will be in effect from now until the end of the season. So <laughs> enjoy your lead while you have it, because it will be short-lived. <laughs> oh, wow. Rick, that was a jury. Just dark when you have your answer machine. You won't be here long, but you can call in and try to get something in on it. Now, mind you, that was, hold on. For 103. Days. Now it went up to 103 <laughs> days. Now let me let me say this. Now after that message, mind you, me, Vic, and uh, the master over there was in the same division. He but got that beat the that, second that, time during the season. That was the second time he got beat, and then the playoffs came. And what happened, Jerry? I got beat. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Ever since Jerry got in this league, I have what? Uh, why are you making him do that? Uh, Let's say, okay, Victor, you've owned Victor, him. You've Victor, owned him. Victor. Damn. I have, I have personally made this man... Oh, don't even say that, dude. My servant. That's how I want to say my servant. You basically made me your whipping boy. How's that? I'll take that. And you know what? I got so much respect for Jerry, though, because he's been beating the dog mess off of Vic, which is great. Oh, come on, dog. We we split. We split, dog. Don't even go there. Anyway. Yeah, we split. Uh, Did we split this year? But I know years passed. No, you did not. Years passed. Hold on. Years passed. I have beaten Jerry, and oh. I think this year, I think this year uh, we split, or he he might have he might have swept. No, me. he swept you and kept you out of the playoffs, Vic. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> come on, whatever. Swept that was and this kept. year. That swept was this year. That was swept this year. Anyway, kept. shut up. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's that's a low, low down on that. But we're gonna get more into that as the season gets uh, further on, and uh, whatnot. Once we get back in the fantasy football, I'm telling you, Mike, you need to join us. If you got that extra hundred dollars laying around somewhere, come try to win a thousand. Come try to win a But uh that's that's what we do. We talk trash on the show and stuff like that as well. Anyway, uh anybody got anything else that they, uh, that they want to talk about? I wanna say welcome back to the prodigal son, Rick. Maybe he'll come back, maybe he won't. We'll send him back in the wilderness. I'll be uh, back next week. As Definitely. usual, Jerry's here to support. We getting that money, making things happen, and my cousin I love him. Always here to help me out and, uh, you know, lend a, a helpful voice, even though he's wrong about the Miami Heat uh, winning the championship. Uh, but check out, check out both shows, Grown Soul and Real Talk, uh, on Wednesday nights, tomorrow, yep. Sunday, 10 a.m., The Master Plan with Jerry, The Master Taylor, here on Blog Talk Radio. I'm about to get out of here, so ladies and gentlemen, 
Here's what I do about this time. Like this. You want to talk back? You in the right place. Come take a step back before I get all up in your face. I know you got to live. You know what God's mine. But there's like 50 other dudes holding on the phone line. Your voice will be heard, sir. Next caller, please. And if I don't concur, we can agree to disagree. We talk your fantasies, fuck your politics. Fantasies, fuck your politics.